We want to be able to take her places, but it's really scary. She spent thousands on doggy discipline. Oh, I've tried two trainers, and I've spent so much money. What you don't realize is that you're emotionally scarring that dog for life. Jennifer has tried everything to control Roxy. I had a, a shot collar once. It didn't work. It just left a mark behind her neck. It burnt a hole right through her. So I quit that. It, it's crazy. You had a shot collar on her when she was a puppy? When she was a puppy. I Somebody had... advised you to put a shot collar on a puppy? Yes. These people call themselves trainers? They do. These aren't trainers. These are animal abusers. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Poor thing. They are probably responsible for damaging your dog from day one. When I first bought Roxy, we would go to the local cafes and in the coffee shops. And within the last year, we can't do that anymore. At a local cafe, Victoria meets Jennifer's daughter, Alana, and gets another taste of Roxy's aggression. This is what we love to do. I mean, we want to be able to take her places, but it's been really hard lately with other animals walking by or even it, at a distance, it's hard. As soon as the dog catch eye contact, all hell breaks loose, and it's really scary. Before they know it, Roxy spots another dog. When Roxy went for the dog as we were sitting by the cafe, uh, that was pretty intense. And I have no doubt that if Roxy actually made contact with the other dog, there could be a fight. What do you feel about this? Would you like to be able to go out with Roxy and your mom? Um, yes. OK, does it scare you when she does this? Yes, very much. It scares me, too. <laughs> Let's get out of here then, OK? Absolutely. Let's go. Now it's time for her to sit down and discuss what she's seen. Let's talk about Roxy's situation. Here we've got a dog that has high anxiety for a number of reasons. First of all, when you had your first training experience and these so-called professional trainers put a shock collar on your puppy and shocked the bejesus out of it. Her behavior has been shaped by all these experiences in her life. What kind of research did you do when you were looking for a trainer for this dog? I didn't do much research. I wanted it right now. And I think you make the mistake that so many people do, is that you get a dog, you want something fast, quick, mm. when you use punitive methods in order to get quick fix training like that. What you don't realize is that you're emotionally scarring that dog for life. I felt heartless because of what I, I did in the beginning to Roxy. I sat there and my stomach was turning. My hands were shaking. First off, Victoria wants to show Jennifer exactly what Roxy went through when she wore her shock collar. If I put this and don't do this at home, even on two, which is the lowest level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I just want you to feel okay. what it feels like. Ouch. Actually, it feels like needles. We only had it on level two. When they were using the shock collar with Roxy, the trainers had it turned up to eight or nine. That just shows you how intense this experience must have been, especially for a five-month-old puppy. Can you imagine what it's like on eight and nine? No. Eight must have been like an electrocution. And this has caused damage to Roxy. It had a profound effect, and she began to fear. She began to have anxiety. This is serious. And that's why it's going in the trash. That was just like a, a, a new start for me. I felt like we were throwing away the past, and we're going to start working on the future. Okay. Training that Roxy has received in the past is all about punishment. That is not the way to train a dog. All the training is now going to be reward-based positive training. This is a clicker. And the reason why we use a clicker is because it's a unique sound and because when the dog hears it, something good is going to happen to it, not something bad. Mm -hmm. Roxy. The clicker provides a clear sound that Victoria pairs with a treat in order to identify and reinforce Roxy's good behavior. When I first started with the clicker, I charged it up. That means I clicked and treated, clicked and treated. So after a while, the brain begins to associate the sound of the click as a precursor to a food reward. So, Building on this foundation, Victoria has Jennifer and Alana ask Roxy to perform the yeah. basic commands that she yeah. already knows. Good girl. Fabulous. Up. Good girl. Nobody. Next, Victoria mm. uses the clicker to teach Roxy a few new commands. First, she'll get Roxy to focus with the watch me command. Mm -mm. I ask her to watch me, 
When she watches me, but I don't want her jumping up at me, she gets the click and treat. Watch me. Good girl. That's it. Next, Victoria works on Roxy's impulse control with the leave it command. Leave it. Uh-oh. Leave it. Good girl. After only a few attempts, Roxy is already displaying incredible self-control. Good girl. Roxy knows that when she hears that click, she's going to hear, good job, get a treat, rather than no, and me tugging on her. This is just a whole new way of training. Leave it. I'm glad that we don't have to yell anymore, and Roxy will love that also. Leave it. Beautiful timing. Beautiful. Clicker training is the first stage to making things more positive for Roxy. Sit. I want to get Roxy on a better path. I want her to relax, feel less anxiety, feel happier. And I want Jennifer to feel happier too. <laughs> Look at that dog. Oh. Welcome to my cafe. Very cute. <laughs> I wanted to prepare a cafe environment, as it were, and then sit there and have some dogs walk past and see if Jennifer could control Roxy while she was in the presence of another dog. Oh, look, there's a pop-up. Watch me. Oh, good girl. Oh, she's a good girl. Very good. All right, I'm going to give her to you now. Okay. Hi. Leave it, leave it. Good girl. Can you just say leave it once? Oh, yeah. As much as you can. Oh, yeah. If you have to say it again, it's OK. And don't, and leave it. OK. It's hard to get, you know. I know. Jennifer is naturally tense, and so she's very repetitive when she talks. Roxy, 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 Roxy. Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. Good girl. So I wanted her, A, not to repeat words quickly, and also use a very calm, light tone of voice. Do a watch me. Watch me. Good girl. Good girl. Lovely. Each time the dog went past, Roxy was allowed to look at the dog, but then she was either given a watch me cue or a leave it, or some food was put in front of her nose, and she reacted brilliantly. In fact, well, there was no aggression whatsoever. She behaved very well. Every now and then, you would see Roxy look, look at the dog. Love it. And then Good focus girl. right back on me. It was a great start for Roxy to hang out with Alana and I. And I think that already she's improved dramatically. Now, are you going to be as comfortable with Roxy as you are when she's not there? Probably not, no, because you are going to have a, a higher level of vigilance. But I think over time, over time, you will be able to get to that place where she's so used to dogs coming past her that she doesn't care anymore. It's worth doing what we have to do. Yeah. It will be kind of maybe a little nerve wracking, but in a good way. It's, it's for her own benefit. Yeah. It's not going to be overnight, and it's going to take some time and effort. And I'm, I'm willing to work at it. Come on, baby. This way. I'm going to leave you with some challenges to do. First of all, keep on going with the focus training. That's really important. I want you to do as many cafe setups as you can, because when I come back, I would like to take Roxy to a real cafe and sit there and not have her react towards other dogs. That afternoon, Jennifer and Alana work on Roxy's focus at their makeshift cafe. Hey, Roxy, look. Watch me. Watch me. Over here. Watch me. Oh, good girl. Yes, you're so good. Oh, yes. Yes, it's working, isn't it? Sit. Sit. Watch me. Watch me. Oh, isn't that yummy as two more doggies are walking by. Now it's time for the biggest test of all, a return to the cafe. All right. We're at the cafe we again. We're at the cafe. Woo! All right, well, we're just going to stay here okay. and watch some dogs go past and just do all your focus work. I'm still concerned about the cafe. If I see another dog coming, I'll do the best I can. Oh, good. Oh. Good girl. Roxy. Hi. Oh, yes, that was yummy. Roxy. Let her see. Let, let her just see. Now she's discovering the dog. That's a mastiff. That's a biggie. Beautiful. Oh, love. Oh, you're so good. 
She's aware because she can hear the other dog. So get out. Hi, Papa. Hi. Oh, good, good girl. girl. Roxy shows interest in the other dog, but she remains totally calm. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, you're such a She good was nose girl. to nose with that dog. I mean, I don't advise you to do that all the time. She was nose to nose. First time I went to the cafe, Jennifer was extremely tense. Roxy aggressed at dogs as they went past. It was not a comfortable scene at all. Now she's got the confidence to be able to work with Roxy, and that's where I needed to leave her. Victoria has transformed Roxy's behavior, but more importantly, she has changed the way that Jennifer trains her dog. Roxy has had a totally different experience of training this time. Rather than teach your dog through fear, I can see all of that pent up in her. It is now going away. Since I left Jennifer and Alana, they've been keeping up with the training. And although it's been hard work, they're seeing great progress in Roxy's behavior. We've worked on the clicker training, the watch me training, the leave it training, and everything so far is extremely successful. Yeah. Hanging out with her at cafes is so much better now. We bring her with and she's doing great. Oh, look how good Roxy is. I feel like I know Roxy so much better. Victoria taught me so much. Jennifer's hard work has really been paying off and all her efforts are going to be largely rewarded in the future.